Hello, I'm Amanda, and today I'm going to answer the ever so common question, Uchinga, Magios, what's the difference? We'll take a look at both software from every possible angle, so the system architecture, core and web interface, from its documentation, right down to development style and community. Even though Uchinga started out as a fork now a year ago, it has changed so much that it stands on its own two feet, on its own right. It has indeed retained compatibility to Nagios, but after implementing over 400 patches, bug fixes and new features which the community have long asked for, on top of an entirely different architecture, Uchinga has come quite a long way. To show you what I mean, perhaps we should start with a typical Nagios structure and information flow. So, first we have a Nagios instance where you have the core, the Nagios database, which is MySQL, and your web CGIs for the interface. Now to communicate to the Nagios data out database, the core sends its data through the NDO mod and NDO2DB. How does the web interface receive and transmit information? Well, to get data from the core, the web CGIs need to read it from a cache. And whenever a user sends commands, these are sent as pipe files to the command file. Now you need some add-ons. Of course, these do differ. So for add-ons like PNP and Grapha, if you want to use these, you need to fetch performance data from the core. On the other hand, add-ons like Nargvis, they grab their necessary data direct out of the NDO database. All these components combined provide monitoring through their various connections to the Nargvis core. All looks very sophisticated, huh? Indeed, it is kind of an art to write an add-on for a structure like this. The developer needs to figure out the best way of communicating with the core. Through performance data and event handlers, direct from the database, or by cache, or by pipe. He'd need to code each add-on to suit the different interfaces and formats. Say he needs MySQL output, he'd need to write his own parse interface to translate it for the core. If he needed to use five different output formats, he'd have to write five different parser interfaces. That's one major structural difference between Nagios and Achinga that comes into play. Thanks to Achinga's built-in API, developers only need to understand the API and program for that, because in effect, it does the translating for you. For example, the user sends a command through the web interface, say, acknowledge host problem. This command is sent to the API, which translates to various codes such as pipe or SSH, and the core then sends the data through the API again, whether it be live status, or from the cache, or the database. So the API does it all for you. No passes or queries are needed. You don't need to worry about how the command needs to be implemented. And this works for any add-on at all. Really, this little API feature is brilliant. It makes Achinga's architecture really quite simple. Let's take a look. We start with an Achinga instance with the core. Now, this would be the only part of Achinga which is still similar to Nagios, except perhaps for the added 200 or so patches. And now, IDO Utils allows Achinga to also support databases aside from MySQL. So the Achinga Data Out database could be Oracle or PostgreSQL, opening it up to many other users who rely on them. And just as Nagios does, Achinga Core communicates to the database through IDO Mod and IDO 2DB. But the next step is a little bit different. Instead of having Web CGI sitting on the same instance, Ichinga Web is a standalone software which communicates with the database through Ichinga's API. Like any add on, which can now communicate through the API to the core, this makes a huge difference to the flexibility and extensibility of Ichinga in comparison to Nagios. For example, if you want to create a setup for greater security and redundancy, we can scatter these components across different servers. So we have our core and our web interface on two different machines, and even separate the IDO 2DB and connect all the servers via switch or whatever. With this distributed architecture, if one component were to fall out or experience difficulties, you could always have a second one to take up its job in emergencies. Pretty handy, huh? If Achinga's API is cool, then you have to check out its web interface. This is the point of contact users have with their monitoring system, which makes it all the more important that it's flexible and easy to use. Now, Nagios has a tried and true interface, which has remained stable for the last 10 or so years. 
It's laid out with a menu of all the relevant views you need on the left and the tactical overview is always available at the top. So the user basically stays in within this one window, clicking through to the different views. Ishinga on the other hand is laid out as a dashboard with tabs that allow you to flip through the different views you usually use or even customize to suit your day-to-day -day needs. Another cool thing is when you're searching for anything in particular like say a specific host, you can access it via the Ajax search tool. Which unfortunately it's not so simple if you don't happen to have perfect memory in Agios. But once you do find the host you want, you do have a lot of information available at your fingertips. And you can click through to send commands and get more info. Ichinga does this a little differently with the details of all the hosts available all within one window and the commands also. And this saves the user a lot of clicking around, making it really user-friendly and intuitive. You can even rearrange the views to get the information you're looking for. Or you can even filter out information to narrow it down even more. Ta-da! Once you have what you're looking for, you can even tick off the host that you're interested in to send off a compound command all in one hit. All these features are quite unique to the Ichinga web interface, which really does make it hard to beat in any comparison. Nagios has extensive documentation on the official website, as well as quite a few from the community. Though the official versions only come in HTML and PDF files, Ichinga has started using DocBook for its documentation, which is based in XML, so it transfers basically to any kind of format quite smoothly. HTML, PDF, Man pages, single, multiple pages, this keeps documentation open to all who wish to contribute and makes translation much easier. Beyond the format, Ichinga is also more documentation on the web interface and IDO utils than the official Nagios docs. But speaking of translation, not only is Ichinga docs currently available in German, English and Spanish, in fact, we should soon see Ichinga web in all sorts of languages, Chinese, Hebrew, Turkish, French or Norwegian, there's about 26 languages that are currently in the works thanks to the multilingual Ichinga community out there. Ultimately, Ichinga is brought to you by a bunch of monitoring-minded guys and girls who spare their free time to keep the project alive and growing. With easy and quick feedback mechanisms, mailing lists and a development roadmap that is open to all, Ichinga maintains constant progress, responds quickly to patch and feature requests, be more powerful, flexible and user-friendly day by day. All thanks to the fact that open source is at its heart. So we say a big thank you, gracias, danke schön, and merci to all who have supported Ichinga in any way. We'll see you around the blog.